Good morning. I am Doris Green, owner of Lantern Dancer, located in Pagosa Springs. We specialize in contemporary southwestern jewelry, and we carry uh, art. And today I have with me uh, Mr. Orlin Joe, and I'm privileged to have him with, with me because he is quite a renowned sculptor and painter. He uh, lives, where do you live? In Kirtland, New Mexico. Oh, Kirtland, New Mexico. I always think of something else when I think of Kirtland. Anyway, uh, we, we have a painting here, and it's called the, the Horny Toad. And I would like for Orlin, it, it, it's a, it tells a story, and I would like for Orlin to tell you the story. The um, title is called Horn Toad Yay, and it has to do with uh, some of our uh, songs and prayers. And as told to me, uh, sometimes the translation gets lost from its meaning uh, from Navajo to uh, English, but I'll um, try to explain. Um, he's a character back way in time that where they say before there were people, there were just animals, reptiles, birds, and... Um, the story goes, he, he always feuded with uh, the bobcat. And on a weekly basis, the bobcat would come and roll him around, play with him, kind of beat him up a little. And so it went on time after time. So one of those times, I guess the horned toad just got tired. And he, uh, as the bobcat was leaving, the horned toad got up on a rock, made a stance, and just spit out some words. And so the bobcat turned around and ask him if he really meant what he uh, said. So the horned toad said, I did, I'm, I'm tired. So boy, he got roughed up that day and this torn up, you know, flesh showing, bleeding and laying on his uh, underside. So the bobcat left and um, said a few more words in their tongue, their, their language back then. And so as that was all happening, there was a deity uh, standing on the east side watching all this commotion that was going on. And so he just watched them all day long in the hot sun. Uh, I guess it happened during summer and on into the evening and uh, just watched him and he was just barely breathing, breathing. They, and the story goes that where somewhere around two or three in the morning his, his heart would just barely miss its beat and um, as he was going to die. So by morning he was still alive, uh, fortunately, and so the deity uh, rose one more time, looked and disappeared for a while. And so uh, he brought back uh, more deities with him and said, then spoke to them in their language and said, you know, we have to give this uh, horned toad, the Che, uh, some type of gift, some type of protection so that he, he'll be able to protect himself. So they blessed him. They sat him up, told him, you're going to be blessed because of your patience, your endurance, your, your ability to withstand pain and abuse. And so they gave him the, um, the spikes on his tail, his body, his head. Um, it became, a, the shape of his head became an arrowhead. And so mm -hmm. they blessed him. And in our culture, in our culture, they say that the horned toad is... Uh, responsible for making true arrowheads that uh, are found here and there. Uh, the yei itself, um, this is a symbolic uh, visual representation of what I envision in the stories and other artists may emulate uh, different versions, but from uh, my point of view, um, this, this is what I envision. Um, his head is uh, more of a triangular shape which represents the uh, horned toad. Um, always we have uh, feathers with our deities or yetis that represent the, the upper world. We're connecting with um, the spirits. Um, here uh, with the gifts that the deities gave him, he's a, he's a singer so he has a rattle. Uh, he has a feather also representing that he, he knows the prayers and the songs. He's further, he's also a crystal gazer. Um, it doesn't really look like a crystal, but um, that's my interpretation of what uh, when light hits a, a crystal, that's what it may look like. 
They say he's also a uh, time traveler to where this um, sphere is run, is going in a uh, clockwise motion. And you have the Big Dipper, you have the Polaris, you have Cassiopeia, you have reposition of the morning, midday, evening, and nighttime. And they say uh, our Yetis ride on a rainbow. They're, they're spiritual people. Um, and then we all need nourishment. So, you know, he has a water bottle here. He's got his medicine bag. He's got his fire bag. So he's all equipped. And the reason why I put two in there is um, there's always a male and female in everything. So here you have a, a male and a female horn toad. Um, here, uh, again, it represents... Uh, it represents um, certain uh, sage, cedar, uh, what have you, to represent that we're in ceremonial mood. Or these these items are used uh, from the earth are used to bless others. And um, they say the horned toad always ha has uh, lightning too. So lightning is coming out here, and he has a mountain song in mind, so it's, that's a representation of that. And then color-wise, um, I, I believe and come to know that after every ceremony, we're enlightened, we're focused, we, we should look at life, uh, whatever it is, as, as a color in the rainbow, because it, it brings beauty, it brings harmony, it brings peace of mind. And so it's a, it's a very uh, symbolic uh, spiritual painting and all the lines that you see in there represent um, a breeze, wind, uh, something subtle to, to calm the mind. So that's what uh, basically what I had in mind on this painting. It's a, it's a very uh, spiritual piece for me. Thank you very much, Owen. Storytelling is such a wonderful uh, art in in uh, the Native American uh, culture. We have it both in the jewelry and in art. So you can see Orland's painting in our uh, gallery in Pagosa Springs, Lantern Dancer. We're located on the east side in River Center. And we also uh, have the painting on our website, www.lanterndancer.com. Please come visit us.